The National Invitation Tournament Final, Seton Hall versus St. John's University. The coaches are Al DiStefano of St. John's at left and Honey Russell of Seton Hall. And here's the opening tap-off of your Converse Cavalcade of Basketball. Seton Hall in the dark jerseys has the ball. Mickey Hannon feeds Walter Dukes and the Pirates have two points. Here are all the St. John's Redmen. Dick Duckett said is in there. And now Seton Hall. Arnie Ring drives in for a pretty basket. Very pretty indeed. An out of bounds play for St. John's. Duckett receives a throw in. He fakes going in, then sets, and he hits. Seton Hall leads out the quarter, 14 to 9, and here's slow motion on these two great college teams. Walter Duke scoring from the pivot. The biggest crowd in Madison Square Garden history is watching the game as St. John's looks for a basket. Ed Cunningham jump shoots from the foul line. The Redmen again trying to cut down Seton Hall's early lead. Jim Walsh's one-hander rims the basket and watch the marvelous pass by Richie Regan. From flat on the floor, he fires to Dukes, and Dukes scores. St. John's is up against tremendous competition. Davis fakes, and now he shoots. But it's no good, and once more, it's Seton Hall. Regan almost loses the ball, but he's still got it. Richie's jump shot is missed, but the rebound is grabbed by Ring. And he comes through with the bucket. There's Duckett. He's going to shoot. Off the rim. And Seton Hall rebounds. They're a dangerous shooting team from inside or outside. Here's one of their outside experts, Mickey Hannon. Good. Now a coach's eye view of St. John's fighting back. Cunningham hits for the Redmen, but Seton Hall leads 24 to 15 as we start the second half. It's the Pirates' ball. Harry Brooks' set shot is good. Once more, we see Seton Hall in slow motion, and once more, little Harry Brooks. He can shoot. Walsh takes aim for the Redmen. It's off the rim. But St. John scores on Davis's rebound. Mickey Hannon with the ball. Over to Regan, who's one of the best in the game. A pretty jump shot. The Pirates are increasing their lead. Seton Hall continues to show the way. Ring hits from the side. Desperate Redmen are now in a losing cause, but they haven't stopped scrapping. Duckett shoots a nice one-handed. And now the clock has practically run out. Solly Walker makes a steal and gives off to Bob Romano, but it's too late. The game is over. Seton Hall goes wild with jubilation, for they're the champions of this collegiate basketball classic. Fifty-eight to forty-six over St. John's University. Seton Hall goes into the records as the 1953 kings of the National Invitation Tournament. Once more, Madison Square Garden and the annual East-West College All-Star Classic. Doc Hayes of Southern Methodist at left and Frank McGuire of North Carolina are the rival coaches. And here we go for the opening tap-off. West wears the white jerseys and they come up with the ball. Thompson of Iowa State flicks it to Domeyer of Minnesota whose shot is off, but it's still the West in his ball. Maurice King of Kansas hits from the side. Vincent Cohen of Syracuse across the line. Over to Dick Duckett of St. John's. Good. Ashmore of Mississippi State and Thompson bring it back. 
Domai gives it to Illinois' big George Bonsal. There's Jerry Paulson of Manhattan College. He can shoot. Swish. Tom Stanky of Brigham Young. Mel Wright of Oklahoma A&M. And Detroit's Bill Evan puts it away. Ken Hammond of West Virginia Tech feeds Charlie Tyree of Louisville. No good. When Wilfong's rebound is also off, and now the West takes over. Stanky across the line. Over to Evan. Bonsal aiming to shoot. Off the rim, and Duckett rebounds. A beautiful pass to Tyree, who scores for the East. The finest college seniors in America are on that floor. Tom Stanky shooting, no good, but West still controls that ball. Evan jump shoots a beauty. There's Paulson for the East. Duckett flips to Tyree for a nifty job onto the basket. But the Westerners continue to lead the way. When Evan buckets another, they lead at halftime, 40 to 33. It's East ball as we come back after intermission. Thompson picks up that loose pass and dibbles into the corner. Out to Ashmore, and he's got the range. Rosenbluth of North Carolina missing from the key, but Paulson grabs it for the East. Tyree's pretty hook is off, but Charlie's there for the rebound. Ashmore again. Into King, and Maurice hooks a nice one. Rosenbluth holds it up. Into Tyree, who's being guarded closely by Jim Krebs of SMU. Out to Rosenbluth, and the All-America Tar Heel shows scoring form. Now the Western is moving that ball crisply. King's try is blocked, but watch Jim Ashmore scoot in under the ball. Pretty play. Duckett, a key man for the East, feeds Tyree, the game's highest scorer, with 20 points. The Easterners have come on to dominate the second half and have moved ahead of their Western rivals. Duckett steals it for the East, and they're rolling again. It's fairly close all the way, but the boys in black just can't be caught. With the final score by Paulson, the Eastern All-Stars win it 73 to 63. Dick Duckett of St. John's University is named the game's most valuable player. Madison Square Garden and the NIT final game. Here's the opening tap, and Bradley and the dark uniforms get possession. Bobby Joe Mason with the ball. Braves have a basket. Coached by the veteran Joe Lapchick, St. John's is looking for their third invitational championship. Alan Seiden shooting from the corner. Bradley comes charging back. Dan Smith's jump shot is off, and McDade grabs the rebound. He's hot. Once again, the Redmen, and watch them move that ball. Louis Rothel misses from the side, but the alert Tony Jackson is there to cage the rebound. Top-seeded Bradley, beautifully coached by Chuck Osborne, had a season's record of 23-3. and three. Smith feeds nicely to Gene Morse, and the Braves take the lead. Gus Alfieri, number 11. Over to Jackson, who's shooting. Around the rim and out, and that's the start of a Bradley fast break. Dan Smith gets the bucket as the first half ends with the Braves in front, 33 to 30. Ready for the second half. Smith gets possession from Bradley. Number 21 is Bobby Joe Mason, and he's controlling the play. Bobby's jumper is off, but McDade takes the rebound. Bullseye! Seiden brings it back to St. John's. They're looking to break up that zone defense. 
Rolf Farrell shooting. Two points. That's Mason. Over to Smith. Back to Mason. He's terrific. Now Fury across the line for St. John's. Over to Jackson who's driving. It's in there. The Braves were tournament champions in 1957 and they'd like nothing better than to do it again. Smith with the ball. Back to Mike Owens who's wide open. Once again the Redmen. They're two points down and they're looking to tie the score. Both fell out to Alfieri. Over to Sidon. Allen's shot bounces high off the rim. But Jackson makes good on the rebound. With less than a minute to play, the score is all tied up at 61 apiece. Bradley's looking for that good shot. Owen shooting. It's no good, and Jackson rebounds for St. John's. Alfieri slowly brings it back. The clock shows 25 seconds left, and they're looking to feed Jackson for the clincher. Tony shoots. It's good. St. John's leads by two with only seconds to play. Mason with the ball. It's in there. 63 all at the end of regulation play. Now the overtime period. St. John's in possession and that strategy is to control that ball. Gus Alfieri sees an opening. Joe Billy McDade from Bradley. Over to Al Saunders who shoots. It's short of the mark and again Jackson rebounds for the Redmen. That's 27 for the Lanky sophomore who sure has electrified the Garden crowd tonight. Jackson shoots. He's sensational. With just 10 seconds to play, Mike Owen hits for Bradley but the Redmen have taken command and come rolling back. With a final basket by Louis Rothel, St. John's becomes the first team in the 22 year history to win the National Invitation Tournament a third time. The hometown crowd is jubilant and fans race on the court to cheer the Redmen's 76 to 71 triumph. Thompson scoring and rebounding for the Tony, soft sensation Tony Jackson is selected most valuable. The East-West College All-Star Game, sponsored by the New York Hell Tribune's Fresh Air Fund. The East and All-Stars wear the black jerseys, and they get the opening tap. Lenny Wilkins of Providence brings it down. Jerry West of West Virginia. He's good. Jay Arnett of the University of Texas, and Oscar Robinson of Cincinnati. Two points for the West. Bob McNeil of St. Joseph's and Bill Kennedy of Temple bring it up court. St. John's Tony Jackson gives to North Carolina's Lee Schaffer for the bucket. There's Arnett. Utah's Alan Holmes. Into Ron Johnson of Minnesota. Notre Dame's Mike Graney gets the jump shot. The very dependable Len Wilkins has it for East. Over to NYU's Tom Sanders. It rims the basket, but All-American Jerry West rebounds beautifully. The big O, Oscar Robinson across the line for the West. To Horace Walker of Michigan State. Jim Darrow of Bowling Green gets set to fire. And the West leads at the half, 37 to 35. Let's watch in slow motion as these college all-stars compete in the second half. That's Sanders with the ball. Into Al Bungie, the University of Maryland. And that's a pretty hook. Walker shooting. And look at that job by Robinson. He's terrific down there. Jerry West handling the ball. No good, but the ball comes out to Tony Jackson. He finds an opening, and he's got the range. This game's a thriller. With only a little more than a minute left, West leads by a single point, 64 to 63. And Walker makes it 66 to 63. 
Wilkins now trying to settle the East down. That passes to St. Bonaventure's Tom Stiff and back to Wilkins. Lenny has the target, 66 to 65. Now only seconds remain. Jerry West steals the ball. A fast break, two on one. Len Wilkins has it, and there's the winning basket. East wins a thriller. The 10th annual Shrine East-West College All-Star Game gets underway in Kansas City. West wearing the white wins the tap-off. These boys represent the top seniors and the finest basketball talent in America's colleges and universities. They really go all out. Phillips feeds Walt Bellamy of Indiana for the basket. And here are the Eastern All-Stars. Tom Stiff of St. Bonaventure feeds Siegfried of Ohio State for the basket. Bill McClintock of California. No good, but Missouri's Charlie Henke taps it in. Bob Wiesenhorn of Cincinnati. Good. Gary Phillips of Houston dribbles down court for the West. Out to Tom Eshery of St. Mary's for a pretty basket. Tony Jackson of St. John's. Off the rim, Vince Kepton of St. Joseph's intercepts. And North Carolina's Doug Moore makes it 52 to 51 at halftime in favor of the West. Here's West underneath the basket following intermission. Indiana's Walt Bellamy misses, but Bill Bridges of Kansas follows up. Siegfried firing into Tom Stith, and East keeps it close. Gary Phillips brings it down court for the West. Down the speedy Texan goes all the way. Good. Now Butler of Niagara U and Tony Jackson of St. John's team up for a score for the East. Everybody gets into the act in these contests featuring the best of the college All-Stars. Phillips handing off the Cedric Price of Kansas State for the basket. East fights hard and keeps things nip and tuck all the way, but they can't quite overtake the Westerners. In spite of a final basket by Jackson, West takes this Shrine Classic 103 to 100. Invitation Tournament Final, Dayton University in the white versus St. John's at Madison Square Garden in New York. St. John's gets the ball. The feed goes into Big Leroy Ellis, and he hits with a hook shot. Dayton's ball, the Flyers have been finalists in this great tournament five times before. They're itching to win. There's Bill Chmielewski. Pretty. The Redmen have had a terrific season under coach Joe Lapchick, and here's Kevin Loggery driving in. Good. The Ohio boys bring it back. Tom Hatton on the far side. Gary Roggenberg front and center. It's off the rim. What a struggle into the basket. Harold Shane finally grabs it and puts it away. Coach Lapchick, all eyes. His Redmen have the ball. Marguerite's shot is missed, and Roggenberg takes over for the Flyers. Down the floor to Shane. On to Tom Hatton and a nifty feed to the tremendous Chmielewski. Once more, St. John's. Willie Hall to Ivan Kovac, who buckets a beauty. Swish. Coach Tom Blackburn of Dayton sent a screen. His flyers are fired up. Watch Gordy Hatton feed Chmielewski in the post. There it is. Two more points for Dayton. St. John's Loggery takes a desperate shot at the buzzer as Dayton leads at halftime, 35 to 29. The Flyers ball, second half. The St. John's players are guarding them like leeches. Gordy Hatton drives underneath to curl in a nice one. Donnie Burks dribbles it back for St. John's. 
the feet and Leroy comes through Dayton's ball number 12 is Gordy Hatton out to brother Tom and over to Roggenberg Shane in the middle the shot is up but no good and Roggenberg rebounds beautifully again it's Donnie Burks for St. John's the pass to Ellis is almost lost but Leroy recovers for a fine shot for the Redmen Still, the Dayton Flyers can't be caught. A whiz of a pass to Gordy Hatton rings up another two-pointer. The St. John's Redmen are no longer able to overtake them. There's the final basket by high-scoring Kevin Loggery, but only four seconds remain. There's the buzzer, and look out for the mob scene. Dayton wins the National Invitation Tournament 73-67 to over St. John's. St. John's University is wonderful Joe Lapchick. And at the TV microphone, the fabulous George Mikan. Villanova in the white jersey, St. John's in the dark as Sonny Dove taps the ball to Jerry Houston, and here come the Redmen. Over to Bobby Doerr. Back to Houston, and there's a bounce pass to Ken McIntyre, who shoots. It's in there. Now Villanova, the favorites of this 28th National Invitation Tournament final. Number 22 is George Leftwich, co-captain of the Wildcats, a terrific backcourt man and a fine outside shooter. Watch him. It's a bucket. Over 18,000 fans stand in the garden for this one. And now the slow motion camera focuses on Villanova. That's Eric Erickson dribbling. He gives to Leftwich, and George doesn't miss. Here's St. John's, number 21, Bob Dewar. Over to Houston. Ken McIntyre, and watch the great pass by Sonny Dove into Bob McIntyre for the basket. Pretty play. St. John's again. Ken McIntyre looking for a final shot before the halftime intermission. He gets it, and the Redmen lead 36 to 28. St. John's ball as we move into the second half and watch another fine play as Sonny Dove feeds Ken McIntyre for a score. <laughs> Villanova with 23 victories against four defeats. Left which is jump shot, rims the basket, but Bernie Schaffer rebounds for the Wildcats and Bill Soans takes his pass for a basket. <laughs> Once more, slow motion on these two superb college teams. Al Swartz of St. John's. Bob McIntyre back to Swartz, who gives to Kenny Worrell. The feed is to Bob McIntyre, and he lays it up, and in. The Wildcats fight back furiously. Number 50 is their great center, Jim Washington. Jim gives to Schaffer, and Bernie scores going away. With time running out, Villanova is battling like crazy to get that basketball. There's a block by Erickson. That's which taps at the length of the court, and Erickson raises down for the score. 53 to 51 in favor of St. John's, with three seconds left to play. A desperation shot by Ben Kenny, and it's all over. St. John's University wins its fourth NIT crown and makes retiring coach Joe Lapchick's final night the sweetest of his 50 years in basketball. Madison Square Garden and the National Invitation Tournament Final. Coach Luke Honasek of St. John's University at left and Marquette's Al McGuire at the right. And here's the opening tap. St. John's in the white. Joe Dupre down court. Jeff Sewell steals the ball and the high-ranking Warriors from Milwaukee waste no time. That's Rick Cobb in the corner. Out to Dean Meminger and over to Sewell on the outside. Jeff is free for a beauty. 
The Warriors are super ball hawks, and this big one is the Redmond's team captain, Dupre, discovers. This time, Gary Bell is the thief, and he goes all the way. Here's slow motion on St. John's, who would dearly love to win this tourney for retiring coach Conaseca. Dupre feeds Big Bill Paltz for the basket. And now Marquette in slow motion. Hugh McMahon passes in a Memminga, who almost loses it to Greg Cluse, but Dean recovers, and now he makes that bucket. Thirty-five to twenty-five, St. John trails at the half, and the high-jumping Warriors scoop up another rebound. Cobb fires down a Sewell, and it's two more points for Marquette. Here's slow motion on the favored Warriors as St. John spites them with everything they've got. Joe Thomas shooting. It rims the basket. Dupre rebounds beautifully and races down court. A bounce pass to John DeVasto, and the Red Men cut that lead. Memminger, voted the Tony's most valuable player, continues to spark the Warriors' offense. But this one he misses. Yet the battle for the rebound is won by his teammate, Thomas. It's in there. The Warriors have a little too much in every department for the St. John's finalists, including the game's high individual scorer, Sewell. That's Jeff, and Marquette wins the 1970 NIT crown.